Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to set your pricing as a hairstylist and how to figure out exactly what you should be charging so that you're making the amount of money that you wanna make. I'm really excited to be talking about the subject of pricing, how to set your pricing, and really how to nail down exactly how much you want to be making and how to charge accordingly so that you're actually making the amount of money you want to make each year. The reason why I'm creating this video is because a lot of you guys had asked for a video on how to actually set your prices. So I have another video on how to raise your prices, but what about if we don't know where to set our prices at in the first place? So this video, we're gonna be breaking it down, going a little bit deeper, and again, how to figure out exactly what you should be charging. Now, a lot of times we tend to look at everybody else's prices. Maybe we look at the stylist that works next to us or a coworker or another salon down the street, and that's how we set our pricing. But this actually is like the worst way to set your pricing because at the end of the day, you don't necessarily know what that stylist is making or how much that salon makes. And so it's really important to figure out what the pricing needs to be for you so that you're bringing home the amount of money that you actually want to be making. If you want to make Make over six figures as a hairstylist or maybe your goal is to work part-time and make $50,000 a year or $30,000 a year or $150,000 a year whatever that might look like you need to nail down your pricing and get really clear on how much you need to be charging in order to hit those big goals so the three main pricing structures that I see within the hair industry are all-inclusive pricing, a la carte pricing, and by the hour pricing. Now, as most of you guys know, I no longer work in the salon taking clients, but when I did, I worked on a all-inclusive pricing structure with a range because obviously everyone's hair is a little bit different. And as we talk throughout this video, it's going to be really important to make sure that you have a range or when you give people a quote that it's not exact because of course there are things that can come up along the way that might adjust the pricing. So we'll talk a little bit more about this, but as you're giving your consultations, as you're talking about your pricing, you're definitely going to want to have more of a range type pricing versus set pricing all the time because again, certain things could be changed as the appointment goes on. So for me, all-inclusive pricing with a range just worked easier for me. I felt like it was easier to explain to a client a full highlight is this price to this price, depending on how much hair you have, you know, little things like if we do a root shadow, etc. So for me, I just liked it. Now, some people like to do a la carte pricing where it's the set service is X amount, and then if you add things on, such as a blow dry, it's a little bit more or whatever. And then some people like to do exactly by time pricing. So no matter what pricing structure you decide to go with, whatever works best for your business, for your clientele, and the way that you wanna explain it to your clients, I'm still gonna help you break this down and figure out exactly how much you need to be charging to make a certain amount per year and how to figure out exactly how much you need to be charging per service or per time. So you might be asking yourself, Jamie, how did you figure this out? And really what I did was I broke down all of my services and figured out how much time they took me. And then from there, I figured out how much I wanted to make each hour based off how much I wanted to make a year. So let me walk you through this example because I think it's really, really important because what I realized when I started to break down my pricing this way and get really clear on how much I needed to be charging per hour, I realized that certain services I was actually losing money on while other services I was charging too much per hour. So this just gave me a really good gauge and you might find out after doing this exercise that you're not charging enough for certain services and you might need to either increase the price or figure out a way that you can do them quicker or double book them or whatever works for you. So I think this is gonna be a really, really good exercise for you to figure out if what you're charging is good um, and what you wanna be making. All right, so the first step you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna figure out exactly how much you wanna make each year. So this could be a goal, this could be something that maybe you made a certain amount last year and you wanna make more this year, or this could just be something to go off kind of as a baseline. So let's just say our example is $100,000 a year in revenue. So let's say you wanna make $100,000 a year in revenue. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take your first your 
yearly amount, then you're gonna divide it by 52 weeks because there's approximately 52 weeks in a year. Then from there, you're going to figure out exactly how much you need to make each week. Then you're going to divide it by how many days you work. So for some of you, it might be five days, it might be two days, it might be three days, four days, whatever. So you're gonna divide that weekly number by the amount of days that you work. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to take that daily number that you figured out and you're gonna divide it by the amount of hours you work per day. So let's say maybe you work 10 hours a day, eight hours a day, six hours a day, whatever. And at the end, you're gonna come up with the amount that you want to be making per hour. Now, of course, we all know that this is ideal situation, but again, this is just really helping you break it down so that you come up with that hourly amount that you wanna be making so that you can hit your all-time revenue goal for the year. So because I'm a visual learner I decided to create a chart for you guys so here's what you guys can see here so for instance let's say we wanted to do a hundred thousand dollars a year in revenue we have our year so that breaks down to obviously a hundred thousand then per week we divide it by 52 weeks that means we get to nineteen hundred and twenty three dollars a week so that's the amount that you need to make per week then we divided it out even more so let's say you want to work five days a week then you would need to make this amount and if you wanted to work three days a week you would need to make this amount per week and then last but not least let's say you worked eight hours a day in the end you would need to either make $48 an hour if you worked five days a week or if you worked three days a week you would need to make around $80 per hour or you need to be charging around $80 an hour so I hope that this little visual helps you guys I'm a really visual person and I like to write things out so you guys can take a screenshot of this but basically you're gonna take the yearly amount divided by 52 weeks divided by the amount of days you're working and then divided by the amount of hours you're working in a day one thing that I do want to mention that that hundred thousand dollars if you wanted to make that that was your goal whatever your big number yearly goal is that obviously doesn't include taxes or other expenses so that would be your revenue number not necessarily your profit number so take that into account that if you actually want to take home a hundred thousand dollars you're gonna need to add in your taxes your expenses and all that fun stuff to actually get your hourly number but this is just like I said a really good base to go off of if you want your revenue number to be that high amount or whatever amount you set Okay, so once I figured out how much I wanted to make per hour based on my yearly amount, then I broke it down this way. And I'm gonna show you guys a chart real quick because again, super visual person. So here is the chart that I created. So let's just say you wanted to make $50 an hour. That's how much you figured out. Obviously, this could be totally different for you, but let's just say it's $50 an hour. So what I did was I broke it down by half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, and etc. And then from there, I divided that amount. So you guys can see right here, one hour would equal $50. So half an hour would be $25 or two hours would be $100. So I broke this down and figured out exactly what my pricing needed to be based on the amount of service time it took me. So if a service took me four hours, I should be charging around $200 for it. Or you know, if a service took me two hours and 25 minutes or whatever, this is how I should be uh, basing my prices. And I mean two hours and 15 minutes, you guys know what I mean. Anyway, so this would be how I broke down my pricing and figured out exactly exactly how much I need to be charging per hour. So once I knew exactly how much I should be charging per hour down to each quarter hour or 15 minutes, I then created my pricing off of that. So what I did was I took another sheet of paper and I wrote down all the services that I do. So a haircut, balayage, highlight, whatever. And I broke them down and said, okay, how much time does each service take me? So a haircut took me an hour. So I should be charging my hourly price for that haircut. Now, a balayage took me anywhere from three and a half to four hours to four and a half hours, and so that's where my pricing range would come in. So I would take that three and a half hour price, and I would say that was my base price, and then I would take my four and a half hour price and figure out my base price from there. So then I would say a balayage is gonna cost between X amount of dollars and Y amount of dollars. And that would be just a really easy way for me to figure out exactly my base price for my pricing. Now, one thing that I want you guys to make note of is as you're doing this exercise, as you figure out how much you need to be charging per hour, you're writing down your prices, being really truthful about how long each service actually takes you, I want you to make note of maybe some services that you haven't been charging enough for. So for me, 
a service that I wasn't charging enough for was root touch-ups because they would come in and I would apply their color, they'd process, and then by the time they left, it was usually around an hour and a half to two hours. Well, I was only charging just a little bit more than my haircut price, so I was losing money on those clients. And a way that I want you guys to think about it with these clients or services that maybe you're not charging enough for your hourly rate, it might feel like, oh my gosh, I can't charge that much or I can't do that much for something as simple as a root touch up or a blow dryer or whatever. I want you to be thinking about instead of looking at it of I can't charge that much for the service, think about how much money you're probably losing on services like that. So. For example, if I had a root touch-up client come in, uh, I would spend two hours on them, but I'd be making less per hour. Versus if I opened up that spot and instead put in a balayage client, I would be making more money because I'd be charging my hourly rate and charging what I should be charging. So I hope that that gives you guys a little perspective that if you're thinking about, oh, I don't know if I can raise my prices to what I should be making per hour, think about the in exchange of what if you didn't have a root touch-up client and instead could do a service that you were making your hourly rate on? How much more money you'd actually be making and that you could actually hit your big time and your goal. So instead of thinking about it as like a negative thing, I want you to spin it and make it a positive thing and really look at the consequences of not charging enough per service. So obviously this exercise is really gonna give you base pricing. Now there were some services where maybe I didn't charge quite up to the hourly rate or there were services that maybe were a little bit over the hourly rate, but there was reasons of why I maybe changed the pricing just a little bit. So I was flexible with myself that it didn't necessarily mean like, okay, this service is two hours, I'm gonna charge exactly that price. I changed it a little bit because there are other factors that come into play when it comes to pricing. The first three main ones are gonna be more hair, more time, and product. You have to take those things into consideration. So for instance, somebody that has more hair, you're gonna end up spending more money in product or just more time. Um, you're also gonna have to take into consideration product because a lot of times product is way expensive and if we just charge our hourly rate, we actually won't be making that exact hourly rate because we have to take into consideration the amount of color we took, or um, styling products or back bar products or whatever. So you have to take into consideration products and some services might be a little bit more product than another service. So for instance, haircut isn't gonna be as much uh, product necessarily as let's say a keratin treatment or um, some type of chemical service such as a balayage or a root shadow or an all over color. Those ones might be raised up a little bit because the product takes a little bit more. And last but not least, extra time. So again, that's why you have to have that range, especially when you're communicating with your clients of, well, the service range is this to this because you don't know certain things about how thick is their hair, um, how much time it's going to take, how long it's going to take, so many different factors. But again, this exercise is really just a quick base to go off of. And the last two factors that I want you to take into consideration is expertise and demand. So obviously as we're starting out in the industry, as you're coming out of cosmetology school or as you're just learning in the industry, you might not be able to charge your exact hourly rate in the very beginning just because you don't have the expertise behind you to back you up. So maybe you need to take a year or two years to kind of get some practice under your belt, get that clientele built up, and then from there you can raise your prices to your hourly rate because expertise is something that does come into play when it comes to pricing. Clients are gonna pay stylists a little bit more that have gone to classes, that have that expertise, that have that knowledge, and then have the practice behind them versus maybe a new stylist. So again, this is a base thing for you to go off of, but I really want you to make sure that your expertise is up to par with where you're charging for that price level. Another thing to take into consideration is your demand. So let's say maybe you want to raise your prices or you do this exercise and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to be charging this much in order to make how much I wanna make, but maybe you're not that booked up yet. So 
What I would recommend in that situation is to maybe charge a little bit less than where you want to be for now in order to kind of build up that clientele and slowly over time, get more demand, get more booked up, get more expertise so that you can raise your prices in the future. If you don't necessarily have that demand, it's not necessarily time to raise your prices yet. It might be time to really focus in on your marketing efforts, get some more of those dream clients, get more clients in your chair, really build up your schedule, get booked out even more, and that's when you can kind of come to raising prices. But the best thing is once you do have that demand, you do have a you know schedule that's booked out more in advance, you are able to raise your prices and weed out some maybe clients that can't afford your new price point or just weed out certain services where you're not making as much on. So if you guys are more curious about how to raise your prices, how to let your clients know that you're raising your prices and how I've done this in the past super successfully, I will link the other video on how to raise your prices down below because that one is one you definitely don't want to miss and it goes hand in hand with this video so make sure to check that one out too now of course this video and this pricing structure is exactly what worked for me but I definitely recommend figure out what works for you you might not want to charge a hundred thousand dollars and again just as a disclaimer all of the numbers that I used in this video uh, are example numbers they weren't necessarily what I was charging or what others are charging or the industry standard they were just example numbers so figure out what works for you and those other price factors that we talked about a few minutes ago. All in all, I just want you to remember these final three things. The first thing is make sure that you are charging your worth. You are an amazing stylist. The fact that you're even watching this YouTube video, learning how to grow your business, probably have watched some of my other videos, practicing new techniques, you're learning new things about your business, how to market yourself, how to grow. You need to make sure that you're charging your worth. And as you do this exercise, you might realize that you've been undercharging. So again, check out my other YouTube video about how to raise your prices, but make sure that you're charging your worth and charging your value as a stylist. The second thing is don't spend your clients money for them. I know it's so easy to feel like, oh, my clients can't afford this, or my clients don't make very much money, so I shouldn't charge them that much, or this service shouldn't be that much, or whatever. So many times we get in our head about spending our clients' money for them, so don't do that. You'd be surprised at how many clients are super awesome and are willing to pay your new, higher prices because they love you. And last but not least, that leads me to my third point, is make sure that you're creating a client experience worth paying even more for. So I want you to think about as you're finishing up this video, as you're doing this exercise, is is your client experience worth paying even more for? Are you offering them awesome beverages or is your salon really clean? Um, Are you making sure to listen to their needs, do a full consultation? Are you adding in those little extra details? Are you really paying attention to them, listening to them and making sure that you're trying to provide the best value service as possible? And if you can think in your head, you know, the service that I'm offering would be even worth more than what I'm charging. That's when you've hit the magic and that's when you know that you are definitely ready to raise your prices and start charging. So all in all, I hope that this video was helpful for you. And I know that some of you guys probably after watching this video are wondering, okay, how do I get more of those dream clients? How do I get booked up more? I know that I mentioned that earlier in this video. And personally for me, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I believe that Instagram is by far the fastest way to grow your clientele. So if you guys haven't already, I have a free hashtag workbook specifically for hairstylists, and it's gonna show you how to start attracting more local dream clients in your area that wanna come get their hair done by you. So it's completely free. If you guys wanna download it, you can go to jamiedana.com slash hashtag workbook, or I have it linked down below. Like I said, it's free, and it's a really great resource for those of you guys who are looking to utilize Instagram to grow more of that dream clientele, get booked up and start making more money. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already come on over to Instagram, come on over, say hi, send me a DM. I love getting to chat with people who are watching these videos and I'd love to know if this video was helpful for you. Last but not least, make sure to hit the subscribe button below because I do lots of fun videos like this and you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're not missing out on any videos. And if you liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button down below to let me know that you like this video and if I should be creating more videos like this in the future. 
As always, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you on my next video. So I'll see you then.